number the famous driver Brins Nigel Mansell in the Ferrari four seconds only behind Alain Prost the gap has come down from 16 to 4 Williams McLaren McLaren now Nigel Mansell should be next and he's past Derek Warwick and he's now less than three seconds behind Alain Prost lapping in 125.7 compared with 126.1 for all the three cars in front of him. There are the first four. Patrese, Senna, Prost and Mansell. And Prost the closest he's been for the whole race to Earth and Senna. In fact, the leading three of Concertina up. And uh, we're getting very, very close to half distance in the race. Uh, I must say it's a bit of a surprise to me that none of these leading four have yet been into the pits for tyres. And it may well be, remember, that tyre decisions, the final decisions, are taken during the race. Now, before the race, the leading teams were saying that they thought they'd have to make a tyre stop, but of course they can look at the wear of other people's tyres. Goodyear makes the information available to them, and so of course to Pirelli, uh, that of what, how the wear has been and how the tyres look that have come off other cars, and that helps them, and, and decisions can change during the race. And I would have thought that if they were going to make stops, they should have done it by now. And the first four are catching to lap. Martin Brundle there. Now, Martin is an experienced driver. He is the world champion sports prototype driver of 1988. In his Brabham Judd, he will see this battle for the lead bearing down on him. And he will see Mansell going through and taking third position from Alain Prost. Nigel Mansell in the V12 Ferrari goes up into third place. Now, can he do the same thing to Ayrton Senna? And you saw how Mansell did that. He was much quicker through the downhill, that corner there, that they're just exiting. He gained all his momentum, and the momentum that he had carried him past Alain Prost. Tremendous piece of driving by Mansell because he judged the run at Prost just perfectly. He had to get the run through the previous corner and then make his play on the straight and he did it to absolute perfection. Tremendous stuff by Mansell. Riccardo Patrese with the prospect of his third Grand Prix win in front of him is certainly not going to give up lightly. Here, Jonathan Palmer going into the pits and Senna goes for it. He goes through. Ayrton Senna takes the lead on the 52nd lap of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Patrese was just slightly off his mark there and now Mansell is going to do the same thing no he's not he has to hang back forces his way through Patrese has lost two places in almost the time he takes to say look at Mansell climbing all over the back of Ayrton Senna and believe you me Alain Prost will be cheering like mad from his cockpit for Mansell and he'd rather finish third with Senna second than second with Senna first Look at Mansell climbing, 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 but he's not going to help him now as Senna will power away with the Honda engine. There is the new race leader, Ayrton Senna, with the V12 Ferrari behind him, completing another lap, completing the 54th lap in this 77-lap race. Nigel Mansell still got plenty of time to come to grips with Senna. Senna's still got plenty of time to pull away from Nigel Mansell. Mansell harrying him, look at it now, Mansell is closer now than he's ever been at this point. This is the Ferrari's opportunity to pull out of the slipstream of the McLaren and go through. Senna gets his foot down, this is where the superior Honda power takes over and, Mc and Mansell is not going to make it for another lap. And there is Gerhard Berger who will drive for McLaren next year, walking in, having yet again for the tenth time this year in ten races having failed to score a world championship point and Mansell goes through oh fantastic Nigel Mansell as he and Senna come up to pass the Onyx takes the lead and here we see it again less than a lap after we said that a back marker could be what 
Nigel moves a tremendous opportunism driving because he didn't have long to think about that. He had to get round Senna as well. He had the momentum. Senna had to lift. So, Nigel Mansell, who finished second in the French Grand Prix, having started from the pit lane, is showing every sign of winning the Hungarian Grand Prix, having started 12th on the grid. He's now four and a half seconds and much faster ahead of Ayrton Senna, 123.6 compared with 124.5 into the last lap just two and a half miles between Nigel Mansell and the chequered flag and really a magnificent drive by Nigel Mansell I'm sure he'll look back on this as one of the best of his career the Ferrari has worked beautifully for him but uh, he was given an awful lot of work to do starting 12th on the grid he didn't put he was patient where it mattered in the early part of the race and then he just went quicker and quicker and a superb win for Nigel Mansell and Ferrari Yes, over the line goes Nigel Mansell for his second Ferrari victory of 1989. And this is Berger. Are we going to suddenly see the Nigel Mansell Ferrari come alongside us as we ride with Gerhard Berger on the last lap of the Mexican Grand Prix with, Na with Alain Prost seemingly going to win it and, and, and Mansell going round the outside. Incredible! Up into second place. He's regained that second place and now he's barely rocketing away from Berger on the last lap in Mexico. Absolutely brilliant manoeuvre by Mansell. Fantastically brave. But he did it because you go high into that corner and if you get on the outside where it's a bit slippery. But marvellous stuff by Mansell. Silverstone the following year. An unplanned but necessary pit stop left him chasing teammate Piquet on fresh tyres but a long way behind. And then I believe in the last 19 laps we broke the track record 11 times and then did that fantastic dummy down hangar straight and shall we say there wasn't much room between us going into so. And of course it was just a sensational victory because uh, it was almost unheard of and then for me the engine blew up on the on the slow down lap. I actually had meltdown on the pistons and the turbo because I had the turbo full up, um, full boost for about the last six laps. And I was out of fuel on the last lap because that was the year that we had to sort of uh, regulate the fuel. And I was minus fuel going on the last lap and I just thought, it's a British Grand Prix, there's no way I'm stroking it, I'm gone. As they sprint down towards Cox, it is Berger leading. And leading at the end of lap one, Gerhard Berger. Ayrton Senna is second. Alvaretto is in third position. In fourth place is Guterman. Fifth is Capelli. Sixth is Nanini. Seventh is Nigel Mansell. Race order, lap three, Gerhard Berger leading. Senna second, Alvaretto third. Then Guterman, Capelli, Nanini and Mansell is seventh. Yes, and Mansell's really having a go. Mansell's always like the wet and Mansell's past Capelli. So Mansell really charging. These conditions of course will suit him to use his driving skills. There is Guterman in the march in fourth. Nanini fifth and Nigel Mansell red five in the Williams Judd in sixth position and the gap between Guterman and Mansell is about two seconds. That's all. And I think Mansell is going to get past Nanini before Nanini gets past Guterman. Yes, I, I do too, because Nanini has always impressed me with his talent. But, uh, Mansell having a look, Mansell had a look to get inside. But what uh, Nanini has done, not only in this race, but at uh, Imola earlier this year and in various races this season, whilst he's impressed me with his talent, he's unimpressed me with his intelligence. Senna coming up behind Gerhard Berger and about to lap Alain Prost. Senna passes Berger, tucks in front of the Ferrari. They both pull out to take Alain Prost and lap him. And I can tell you that while all that has been going on, there has been a change behind them because Alessandro Nanini has been passed by both Mansell and Gugelman. Because there is Alboreto in third place. 
Nanini is in fourth place. Mansell there is in fifth position. And behind Nigel Mansell in sixth place is Mauricio Gujelman, who is dropping back. He's now four seconds behind Mansell. Now, there is the gap, 41 seconds between Gerhard Berger in second place and Michele Alvareto there. And there is Alvareto. He's being caught by Nanini, who is right up now on the gearbox of the Ferrari. And taking him, and Mansell is getting past both of them. Oh, fantastic! Nigel Mansell is, a, is ahead of Nanini. He's up behind Alvareto, and Nanini spins. He's overdone it. Mansell is, has really got the red list, I'm sure, because he's had a really miserable season. He has yet to finish this year, never mind finishing the points. And uh, when Mansell's in a fighting mood, and I remind you that he won the British Grand Prix last year, he won the British Grand Prix the year before, he's in front of his home crowd, and that must give him an extra 20 or 30 horsepower. I tell you what, Murray, he's really enjoying himself. He's having a decent race at last. Nigel Mansell started with Lotus with their active suspension. He did all the uh, test work on it. He learned to loathe it. He didn't like it when Williams used it. Piquet used it first last year in winning the Italian Grand Prix. Now Mansell's back with the old firm in the form of conventional springs and shocker suspension, which gives him the feel of the car, and he's going for Alvareto. He's going for Alvareto. He's taking Alvareto. Man Nigel Mansell is in third position. Berger is 46 seconds ahead of Nigel Mansell. Mark that number, 46. We'll be watching it very carefully for you. But going back to the wet weather tower problem, the drivers who now pay attention to cooling the tyres down looking after the compound, and that involves heading for the wet patches on the straight when they don't need grip, will have an advantage later in the race if it doesn't rain. And both these drivers are thinking because they have both doing what I was just talking about, which was looking for the wet patches. You saw Nanini do it first by going off the line on the straight to find wet patches. You saw Mansell do it there. And Nanini goes for it now and through. Alessandra Nanini taking advantage of the fact that Nigel Mansell had moved across to find a wetter part of the course. But at the moment he is the fastest man on the course and he's taking Nigel Mansell along with him. And Mansell certainly using his head a lot. He's taking a lot of trouble to cool his tyres and this uh, won't help him much at the moment. But in 15 or 20 laps time, if we get no more rain, it may be a big advantage to Nigel if he's kept those tyres. And Nanini having another spin. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, he was always late into the corner. That's Nanini's race, unless he can keep it running, and marvellously he has succeeded in doing so. And he's now off for a little jaunt around Silverstone to rejoin the course. And he's going for the wet bit to cool the tyres, and quite right, this is good driving by Nigel Mansell. He's keeping away from the dry line wherever possible, making, trying to make those soft compound wet tyres last as long as he possibly can. Nigel Mansell is slowly cutting into the lead that Gerhard Berger has over him. Berger in second position is now 19.7 seconds behind Ayrton Senna. And a new fastest lap of the race by Nigel Mansell, who is still charging on and reducing the gap with Berger, but uh, it's too big at the moment for us to get excited about it. But Mansell as we would expect of him, giving it everything he's got. And just watch that difference. Mansell is getting closer and closer to Gerhard Berger. It's still half a minute, but it's two seconds in the last lap. And there are still, we are on lap 44, so there are still 21 laps to go. And that means to say that if Mansell goes on as he is going, he not only can catch Berger in second place, but will catch Berger. And Berger has again, I can tell you, I can look along the pit lane from here, and I can tell you that Berger has again had a very strong visual pit signal from his Ferrari team. Slow, it says. There it is. Yes, I'm sure that's to do with fuel consumption. And the gap has, is, is tumbling down. This is really exciting. Well, the gap now is 19 seconds. Just look at it. It's come down from 35 seconds to 19 seconds. Still sliding about a fair bit, bit of understeer there, coming out and then doing the proper thing, heading straight for the wet patch. Mansell 
of all the cars I've observed in this race has done the best effort on keeping to the wet part to keep those tyres protected. Indeed he is, and it's 12 seconds now. Do you remember the British Grand Prix of 1987 and how Nigel Mansell caught closed on Nelson Piquet after he had had his pit stop and lost 25 seconds to take the Brazilian on the 62nd lap out of 65? He's going faster and faster. Now the gap has come down from over 35 seconds to 12 seconds. There is Berger and there is Nigel Mansell and it's certainly not four seconds now Mansell has got the Ferrari in his sights he started 11th he was 7th at the end of the first lap he's moved up to 6th the 5th the 4th the 3rd and very shortly if he goes on the way he is going on lap 50 out of 65 he's going to go up into second place Berger I remind you is concerned about and his fuel consumption and is being instructed lap by lap to go slower head and center in both in front of both these drivers is worried about his tyres, should he come in, he's been told to stay out and behind them it is Nanini fourth, Gutem in fifth and Piquet in sixth position, this is the battle and Mansell at club and it's starting to rain again as Mansell goes through and nearly off and up into second position Nigel Mansell dodges right over to the right-hand side of the track. It is in second position. Now that's very interesting. The crowd go wild. They see Mansell in the second place. Tremendously popular stuff. Ahead of him, Senna. 49 seconds ahead. The, the gap has come down a lot. It's come down by over 10 seconds between Senna in the lead on lap 61 now. And uh, Mansell in second position, who's, who's yet to complete his 60th lap but uh, it's nothing to get too aerated about because Ayrton Senna is very clearly driving his race. And Mansell finishes in second place. Well, we've had some uh, Grand Prix this year which have been dominated by the McLarens. They have dominated this one too because Senna has won brilliantly. But here is the man that many people will think is the man of the day, Nigel Mansell, who is back and he knows it, he's waving to the crowd, and the crowd wave back. The 1991 Spanish Grand Prix was held on what was then a brand new super circuit, the circuit de Catalunya in its original layout. After morning rain induced most of the runners to start on wet tyres, the two Williams of Nigel Mansell and Ricardo Patrese lined up on the dirty side of the grid, with Ayrton Senna third. Gerhard Berger unsurprisingly pulled away into an early lead. Young Michael Schumacher took advantage of his soft Pirelli wets to force his Benetton up into real contention. He dived inside Nigel as they break for turn five and then ran side by side with Senna, obliging the Brazilian to use all his skill as he harnessed the grip of the Goodyears. The race was on. Mansell responded, repassing Michael in a dazzling move around the outside of what is today turn 12. Now Mansell, red five, closed on Senna. The road was still wet offline. To deviate was to take a step into the unknown. Nigel hung back a fraction as they entered the last corner, timing his exit to perfection, which is to say that he was tucked right under the rear wing of Senna's McLaren as they screamed past the pits. And so out of the slipstream, Nigel darted. Vapor trails flew from the rear wings. Sparks glowed from beneath. Now Nigel was up and alongside, eyeball to eyeball, at 185 miles an hour. Now there was another problem, the grip down the inside of the corner itself. The back end of the Williams flicked out a little as Nigel squeezed the brakes, tiptoeing into the apex. It was over, temporarily. Ultra-conservative, after a calamitous pit stop in Portugal the week before, the Williams team lost position to Ayrton in the switch to slicks. Gerhard too gave ground with a slow stop, which meant that the four of them, Berger, Senna, Mansell, Schumacher, were now running in file. Still the track was wet offline, still the day had more to give. Ayrton spun as he applied power in the last corner, but quickly and deftly selected reverse to minimize the damage. 
Now Nigel was pushing Berger, hustling him out of turn three and then darting to the inside for four, where few drivers are brave enough to tread. Rattled by Mansell for the umpteenth time, Gerhard braked too late, lost the rear and conceded the lead. Now it was a Nigel Mansell masterclass. Now he was clean, precise and all-pervading and Red 5 had passed the likes of Michael Schumacher, Ethan Senna and Gerhard Berger to win the inaugural Spanish Grand Prix at Barcelona.